Hi, I'm Hoosfoos McCabe, and you are my trusty and good-looking viewer. Today, we seek the entity, a witch who has purportedly set a curse on this building. Stay tuned, it's about to get spooky! <laughs> okay, so a few things. One, our health is low, so let's use this charge. Okay, very good. Looks like Kim has something to say to us. Let's see what are we got going on in here as well, before we check out anything else. So we've got, ooh, it's a map, a map of Martinez. Let's interact. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets. Across Rue de Songs Islaine and Rue Saint Sipar, over Saint Brun and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Okay. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and select the map tab. Let's put the map away. We will definitely, we will definitely check the map in just a second. We've also got a journal. Investigate doomed commercial center. Search for the malignant entity. Placen said she lives inside a chimney. Find a way in. Okay. Ooh, let's check our map. Check it out. Ooh, sleeping dock worker. Hey, that's the guy. Why is this? Oh, whoa. Oh, neat. Check it out. We can go th along each of these and see where they are. Damaged ledger. Another damaged ledger. Oh, okay. Renee. Mirror. Policeman cloak. Oh, yeah. We have to go back and try that. We have more Sawa Fair now. Fisherman shacks. Church. Martinez waterfront. So if the sleeping dock worker's here, then oh, go away, please. Then this is the whirling in rags, which we can see. So we've barely been anywhere. This is the tree we were just looking at. Here's the bookstore that we're in. I right, get out of here. How do I? Ah, OK. Wow. So we've got all this stuff. We haven't been down here at all. OK, let's talk to Kim. What is this place? Well, it's clearly a gym, but obviously we have to say it's the netherworld beyond the veil. No, it's a gym, though it looks like no one's been here in ages. Oh, well, why did you ask if you knew what it was, Kim? Jeez. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Whoa. Yes, because it's closed. <laughs> Fucking Kim. He's like a straight man. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's right. move on, shall we? Oh, hey, Kim. Okay, so we've got these looks like three things here. We've got, ooh, maybe it's a bull. And then we've got uh, a barbell. So... Let's go to our inventory and we have our tools and we have never used a flashlight, so we're going to equip it. How do we equip it? Oh, there it is, held in our right hand. Oh, let's put the pry bar in the left hand so we can use that as a weapon. Okay. Oh, we've got our flashlight. Oh, we can aim it around. All right, let's go check this out first. Punching bag. Sand is dripping from a punching bag, although you would think we'd see the sand. Looks like a... The poster says, Sidious Fortis, the rest is worn off. 
Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Nice. Okay, let's try this barbell. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. Bet it's too heavy for us, though. Our physique is only average. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Oh, hell yes, we're going to lift them. In our awesome suit, too. Here we go. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Oh, boy. Lifting it is legendary. <sighs> we, we get an extra chance because we notice there's no collars on it. But, uh, oh, I almost, I, I, this guy's a show off. Uh, we got to do it. I think we got to do it. You managed to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. Whatever. Weightlifting is for the intellectually impaired anyway. It was never my favorite either. The lieutenant is obviously handling you. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. Fair enough. I also prefer running. Okay, Kim, you're in the way. We've got a bull here that we want to get. Oh, shot put ball. Wow, that's heavy. 13.7 kilos. Yeah, that's... Oh, no, that's the price, not weight. Okay, that's all that's in here. I think we can go up these stairs. Got... There's something way up here. Oh, what's this? Oh, I think there's something right here. Is this a thing? Oh, whoa! Lots of stuff. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Okay, can we get over here? Oh, no, no, that's not the way I want to go. Hold on, please. Hold your horses, mister. The bird? Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Taxidermy place? A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Okay, we got some drawers here. Oh, 3.12 real. Nice. What's this? A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Okay, so a tailor shop. Steel rollerblades bearing this uh, bearing a slipstream logo. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Apparently, I'm having trouble saying slipstream today. Oh, in these drawers was. Production schedule filament memory. Wow, 50 real. Item gain. Let's check it out. See what that is. The cube like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hand. It is intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads production schedule note. This filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. We've never seen a radio computer, but maybe there's one in Kim's car. Another 1.5 real. Oh, there's a chalkboard here with some cool looking stuff on this it. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on off button. A piece uh, of paper still hangs from the printer. I think this is the radio computer if we can power it on. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. 
Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Let's turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Let's see what happens if we look inside. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. Okay, let's see if this does anything the without... The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Let's see what happens if we press play or print before we put in the filament. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay, so play, uh, let's press play again. Nothing happens. Okay. Nothing happens. All right, looks like nothing's going to happen. Let's insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Nice, let's do it. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. I wonder why this thing could power on if the lights don't actually work in here. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Indian Rapid Station 1. Oh. I, I understood basically none of that. If, if I couldn't read it here, I would have no idea what that woman said. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What are you, a machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the production schedule? So much for him trying to be mysterious. He repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. I don't think this is going to end well for us. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulin Dian Station. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulin Dian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. Accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Okay. Now please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this, this interactive call in radio game? Any other questions? You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. I guess you know, the static drowned out her response. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. All right, thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Uh-oh. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. I think this is where we start to see him become a better cop. Let's go for it. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for stress accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Maybe we can find the password. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. We definitely don't want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Okay. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Undoubtedly. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? No, thank you. Thank you, and goodbye. 
Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. All right, let's remove the production schedule, although I think we could probably leave it. The filament it. slides out of its glowing nest. What else is in here? Let's check out this chalkboard. I bet the password's right on here and we could have looked at it. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Okay. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Do we think this is these people were working on some kind of role-playing game for their call-in radio game? Or do we actually think these Welkins are real people or real things, real entities that exist in this world in a supernatural state? You should adopt one of those Welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a Welkin. Hmm, fascinating. Yes, yes. One of the Welkins towering among the rest appears to be different, however. Let's examine this Welkin. This is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. I, I don't think that Officer Superstar would be racist. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. Yeah, we're not going to become the Hitler Welkin. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Kim, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Oh, tell me about it, Kim. Jeez, I've spent the last two episodes dealing with that bullshit. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Uh, Kim is a skeptic. We know that. So maybe they are real. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. Let's inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. Mm -hmm. I have always found morphine and, and really all opiates quite Cozy. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Yeah, definitely, definitely world building. Let's inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid the grand scheme of production and money. Uh, are these post-it notes? No, these are the photos, because this feels like a sprint board, like a chalk Trello, if you will. Oh, that brings back memories I'm not sure I necessarily want to relive. Minimi stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Yeah, perhaps Station 41 wasn't agile enough. 
As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Yeah, that's how I felt about pointing tasks as well. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Okay, let's inspect these notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. I'm guessing Wirral untethered is the password, but I suppose it could be any of these. Let's, let's see. Uh, let's look at this and this and this thing over here that looks like another bool before we go back to the computer. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. This is a lot of words I once again do not understand. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know what a Cadran mosaic tile is. History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says... This one can listen in on any station it wants. I feel like this guy, given who he is, would know what a game master is and would be familiar with role playing. But let's let's do this anyway. Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. Yeah, maybe it's me. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call in station, it looks like. And that makes sense. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. And this is a pretty neat idea, actually. Just a bunch of randos calling in to play a role-playing game together. My God. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Squinting at the lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Oh, I guess this is a fireplace. Maybe this is the ash clean out. No, I guess it would be the ash clean out. I don't know. God, is this a door? That's a door. Let's check this thing out. Oh, maybe that's not a bull. Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Okay, you know what? This is a door. We'll try it. Oh, we just zoned. Uh, wait. All right, let's see what Kim has to say to us. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to look at here. Wait, can I zoom out more? Nope. This is the maximum I can zoom out. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? This is where we need to decide whether Superstar actually believes in the curse. He may very well be detached enough from reality that he might. Let's go with that. Someone tried to exercise the curse using technology? No, that's not it. I think... The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. This self-referential shit is pretty fucking funny. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the WeWorld board game, with heat death thrown in. 
Uh, Kim knows a lot about this kind of thing, huh? Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. That's how I feel, definitely. That's apparently how uh, Wizards of the Coast felt about D&D, so they bought TSR. Through call-in stations, none of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Aha! It's like a nascent Roll20 website. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Cool. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Kim definitely has a, an interest in this kind of stuff. He's a fellow gaming nerd. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The curse got them. I see no other explanation. Ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. Hmm. I wanted to pick some of those other things. Let's see if we can get more out of Kim. Yes? Uh, nope, nope. At some point we're going to say you seem to be following me. Should we look for the password? No, let's look around here. We'll go back with the password. Oh, we got some money. And, oh, magnesium to boost our morale. What we really need is something to boost our health, though. Let's check this out. Oh, it's a fridge? It's a polar bear fridge? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Man, I hope there's like beer or something in here. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Of course it is. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Of course. Just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points at the snaky, the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Close the door. All right, let's see what that note says. Let's interact with it. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You find the filament memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Oh, could this be Kuno, the illiterate ginger kid? Let's let's see what he says. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? Really? You don't have a single guess? Yeah, you mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Put the note away. Now, do we have the magnets? Does not look like we have the fridge magnets. What else can we see here? This thing over here, this thing, this thing. Let's check this out. Oh, an ice cream maker. There we go. Defrosted and unplugged. 
Oh, something over here. The flashlight on it. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Ooh, okay. Curiouser and curiouser. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Was this like some kind of panic room? A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary oh, period. There we go. Panic room. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine the light on the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Oh, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock in better cosmetic order than the others. Oh wow, there's guns in this game? This one looks nice, let's take it. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. Okay, certainly a point of information. Maybe we can take it to Rene, the old soldier. And we've got something in the items. The uh, rifle, a broken Bell Magrave from ages past. It's a four shot bolt action military rifle with a wooden frame. It said we took the fridge magnets, but we didn't actually get the fridge magnets. All right, so let's head back out. Let's go up here. It's like a coal a thick boiler. layer of coal yeah. dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. Ah, we can eavesdrop. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? We should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. We can do this physical instrument. We'll probably make it, but I'm concerned that we would actually alert the person that we're here. Let's, let's first say, those voices I heard, maybe it's the malignant entity. Blason said it lives in a chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected, but malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Yeah, but they actually, the non-supernatural sure do. Always has to be the skeptic, this man. I say we yell. Let's go. Since we have such a good chance of success. Although I guess, look, it's a white check, so it doesn't change the direction of the game. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? I really think we have no choice. We have to go with, I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come up there. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. <laughs> okay. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Nice. After you, officer. I'm going to smear my hands with coal. Maybe we can draw pictures. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. I didn't really have a good reason, but this guy is a little bit weird anyway. Still, it's good to have this dirt on you. Real men wear coal for makeup. Nice. <laughs> Do they? Real men wear coal for makeup, huh? Okay, let's leave. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. All right, let's check out the other stuff that we saw here. Uh, that's where we came from. Okay, let's go here. I didn't quite realize that we had gone down to get here. A 
frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, the text is in the way here. Let's see. What's this? Oh, we've got more nos nosafed, which we can use. It'll help us with health. And then a little bit more, a few more centums or whatever parts of a real is called. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. I'm not going to unplug them yet. I want to see what else is going on here. Let's check out this drawer. Oh. Oh, insane mesh to tank top. Oh, yes. Plus one drama. Oh, we are putting that on right now. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Instead of minus one suggestion and plus one conceptualization, we are a drama machine. Let's go look at our skills. Look at this. We have eight drama. We're all over it. All over it. Let's, re let's uh, refresh our memory on what a super high drama is. At high levels, drama may render you an insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia. For to know the world is a stage is to know the truth is a vanity. Yes, I love it. This guy is extreme. Extreme nutbag, but still. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Where are we? Uh, is this the whirling in rags? It is. Oh, shoot. We just came out by the door. Okay, let's go back in because I wasn't done with that. So let's go back over here. Can we get over there? Oh, oh, check it out. Okay. Officer Superstar is, in fact, a superstar and knows how to get there. Oh, we did not get everything. Check it out. There's something up there. It looks like cans of something. Maybe it's health. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. Oh, somebody's been here recently. What is this? Postcard, La Delta 51. Let's take a look. Items. Postcard, La Delta 51. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia toned. Midtown traffic passes overhead. The ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. This The postcard is prepaid. Ooh, I wonder if we could send it somewhere. Okay, and there's nothing else that I can see in here, so I guess we've exhausted it. Okay. Can we go this way? Oh, check it out. I didn't even think this was open. This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. Oh, yes. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Is this guy uh, a dice maker? Well, that's an answer that we'll have to wait until next time. Thanks, as always, for joining me. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and pressure your friends to do the same. Enjoy the rest of your day, and remember to have your pet spayed or neutered, but not both.